I'm Jeannie. I'm Rachel. And I'm Nikki from Tyrion's Landing. A podcast member of the Gunna Geek Network. Just like the one you're listening to now. The opinions expressed are those of each individual. Check out all the other podcasts at GunnaGeekNetwork.com. And get ready because geekiness begins in... Three, two, one... Josh here. I just wanted to start today with a quick preview of an episode we have in the works for comedy drama Lucifer. The episode will hopefully be done in the next few weeks. We've recorded about half of it. So the plan was to share just a little taste of what will be coming for Lucifer as it's a campaign that just happened in mid-2018. Deadline.com, May 11th, 2018. Quote, Lucifer's Cinderella story has ended after three seasons, with Fox deciding not to renew the Tom Ellis starring series for a fourth, unquote. Deadline.com, May 25th, 2018, quote, Fans outraged at the cancellation of Lucifer will get to dance with the devil one more time. Fox has a two-hour bonus episode of the show titled Boo Normal and Once Upon a Time, unquote. CNET.com, June 16, 2018. Quote, Looks like the former King of Hell has his own guardian angel. Based on the DC Comics title, the TV series Lucifer has been saved from certain death by Netflix. Unquote. So yes, Lucy fans, congrats on the fourth season. That's a huge result. Hopefully the fourth season maybe orients itself back a little bit more to the strength of season one and two. Not that season three was bad, but it probably was the weaker of the three and may or may not have led to Lucifer being so heavily on the bubble. Another show that suffered a little bit from a change in writing, a change in feel, and maybe some strange character choices was the Fox drama Sleepy Hollow, which is actually the topic of today's episode. And more precisely, we're going to look at the fan-led petitions to move the writing and the feel of Sleepy Hollow back to being more like the much-loved season one. Okay, here we go. Sleepy Hollow season one was much loved by fans. It was seen as a very different very crazy, very funny show. But as you'll see throughout the comments that we've aggregated together today from fans, it felt as though the writers may have lost their way a little bit and therefore lost a portion of the fan base as well. So we'll move on now with a collection of different reviews and forum board comments that were either popular on the platform itself where they were posted and or they act as a nice summation of the general feel of the fan base about season two of Sleepy Hollow. So VH, commenting on Spoiler TV, quote, Sleepy Hollow is smart, well-written, and a well-acted show that is entertaining, exciting, and emotionally affecting, unquote. So that's a pretty positive comment. The next one also from Spoiler TV, this time from JW, quote, Sleepy Hollow is a great show with a cast that has great chemistry. Reverting back to what worked in Season 1 will bring fans back. The last episodes and upcoming ones prove that. Unquote. So we'll move next to RJR, who commented on Rotten Tomatoes. Quote, Thanks so much, Fox. Just thank you so much for interfering with a once bonkers show by turning it into boring, formulaic stuff. An absolutely poor decision on your end and this season, which held great promise, turned into a snooze fest on most of its episodes. Because when it was great, it was spectacular and hilarious. When it wasn't, it was below average. Not even sure we're getting a third season to correct this, because that last episode sure felt like a goodbye. A damn fine goodbye at that. Oh well, still hoping for a second chance. Unquote. So, scathing there from RJR. So next we'll go to the iTunes US store, 
This review was from By A Prayer. Sleepy Hollow Season 2 was, quote, all over the place, unquote. So not particularly positive, but if we dig around a little bit in there for something positive, obviously using the phrase all over the place means ideally it moved from quite bad to possibly quite good, which also points back to the RJR comment from Rotten Tomatoes. Maybe there were some small positives in Season 2 of Sleepy Hollow. So we'll stay with the iTunes US store. This time, my name here. They said, quote, Love the first season and a half, but not buying the sudden change of tempo of the way the characters are getting altered. Unquote. So that particular comment, although short, and not all that fun to read or to listen to, really, it did point to the major gripe that fans had about season two, that all of a sudden the character development, in quotes, got ramped up and changed and altered, and suddenly there was some uncharacteristic pacing to the show that made some of the transitions and the growth or lack of growth in certain characters feel very unusual and unbelievable. So our last fan comment comes from Aradox-59760 from IMDB. This, I think, is both the most positive about the show in general, when you look at the show across, spoiler, a whole four-season arc, but also as a microcosm of the way the changes in the show made the fan base feel about season two. Quote, The first season was surprisingly great. I thought with such a premise as this, it would undoubtedly be a train wreck, but I was pleasantly surprised. I even felt the need to tell people how good it was after watching the epic season one finale. However, it's only gone downhill from there to the point where after just two seasons, it's a pile of doo-doo that I'm no longer emotionally invested in. Unquote. Yikes. Pile of doo-doo. That's pretty harsh. But as a writer, I can't imagine any line would hurt more than I'm no longer emotionally invested in. But phrases like that, maybe not articulated the way Aradox 59760 said that, they were plethora amongst the forum boards, the reviews on Amazon, iTunes, forums, IMDb. The lack of emotional investment from previously invested fans must have hurt, but must have also set a lot of alarm bells ringing. We'll finish up now. Going back to Spoiler TV, this particular comment from Robert Froon mustn't have been an easy one to write, but there's also some positives here. Quote, Team Sleepy really cares, and while Season 2 has been a rough one, they've heard fans and are doing their best to make changes. Unquote. Essentially, the fans were letting the writers know, whether it was via forums, Twitter, Facebook, podcasts like this one, YouTube, physical letters, whatever that the writing had moved into a place where maintaining the same emotional investment as a fan wasn't possible. It didn't engender those feelings anymore from even the most hardcore fans, which must have hurt as a writer, but also as a head of network or a showrunner or whatever. That must have, yeah, once again, set off some warning signs. So going back to that comment from Spoiler TV, there were changes made. And this is where we come to what's special about Sleepy Hollow and the main crux of today's episode. Although short, this is my main point for today. In an unusual turn of events, the Sleepy Hollow writers and showrunners were actually able to see through their own ego, their own emotions, their own investment in these characters and the storylines that they thought were strong and they thought worked and the character arcs they were proud of, most likely, to realise that the show wasn't as good. And that is massive. These are professionals with careers and expertise far beyond the average fan, but they were obviously inside of that bubble, so maybe it was a lack of contact with fans, or, or maybe as a group they misjudged just how strong the first season was, and they thought they still had room to improve when fans already believed they were onto something special. Think the first season of Battlestar Galactica 
which in my opinion, other than Firefly, is the greatest single season of a show ever, to not realise that our fans are already in this. We don't need to throw 20 curveballs at them to get them on board. They're here with us. And the writers actually took that on the chin and the showrunners executed a really strong finale for season two, pretty much out of nowhere. And we got a great season three and we got a strong season four. And this is off the back of a really weak season. So they did what much better shows, once again Battlestar, failed to do. They recaptured some of the magic that made their season one so special and reinfused that into season three and four of the show. Certainly not an easy thing to do. I'll wind up by saying this before I get too far off track. If you had have told me a show could go from a fantastic season one to the doldrums in season two, resurrect itself into a great season three, and in a really satisfying season four that ties up a lot of loose ends, I would have said it's not possible. If the reimagined Battlestar Galactica couldn't even do that, one of the most well-written shows ever in the early stages of its development, no average show could do that. And Sleepy Hollow, to their credit, they managed to do it. So as a fan of television, you have to commend their effort and getting over their own egos a little bit and maybe some bruised egos in the process. And most of all, you have to congratulate their fans for being so persistent about where the magic is in the world of Sleepy Hollow and just hammering that home to the writers of the show. Okay, all, thanks so much. And in the next episode, we'll be looking at Lucifer, one of the bigger campaigns and more explosive campaigns in recent memory. Okay, talk soon. Cheers. For all episode resources, subscriber links, and ways to support the podcast, don't forget to check out onthebubblepodcast.com. Thanks, and talk to you soon.